So welcome everybody to another episode of the Rematchers Club Cast. Here is what you have to look forward to in tonight's episode. I don't think you're on the headphones. I think you're just on your computer again. Uh, how's that? No. All right, hold on. Let me let me exit out and then try again. Hold on. Exit what out of the whole thing? You shouldn't have. <laughs> There's no way I can drink a beer or two and then sit through three hours without having to pee and miss something important. I swear to God. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's no way you can drink for three hours and not miss when you pee. Welcome, Craft Beer. My name is Donnie. This is the official podcast, the Brewmasters Club, Craft Brews and Geek News. We talk about natural stories, g- local flavors, and our favorite geeky nuggets of pop culture. Who could speak about these things and more? Beside my good friends, Mr. Ryan Roberts and Ashley, how are you? Yeah. Great. <laughs> what What is wrong with you guys? Why are you guys all weird? Uh, it, it, it just is what it is. It's fine. Did you fart? No, I'm leaving. <laughs> 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 We need, we need you. We just I know. introduced you. All right. Well, um, I'm going to meet you just for a second, Ryan. Um, all right. So, Mr. Lossman, Might how well are you this evening? <laughs> Might as well do them just both at the same time. Just intro and outro. Yeah. I, I'm actually just going to start doing that. I'm going to upload my intro and my outro at the same time. Okay. See you later. Bye. <laughs> hey, how's it going? And I'm out. Have a good one. <laughs> no, I'm doing <laughs> good. Right. I'm fantastic. Right. Fantastic week. Uh, a lot of fun stuff upcoming. But we'll get yeah. a little bit more. I excited. would say so. Um, no, I, I really do think there, there's a lot going on. This is a very busy show, and we are already running very much behind. But um, as soon as Ryan hops back on, uh, let's see where he is. All right. Uh, we will. Uh, we can just go ahead and start off things. I know that you brought a beer that you uh, potentially probably would like to drink more of, but just can't. I also have one that I saved for almost two weeks now. So you tell me. You want to lead us off? Yeah, sure. I mean, there's nothing nothing special here. I brought uh, the Funky Buddha uh, Top or Hop Gun. Sorry for calling it by the proper name there, but <laughs> the Hop Gun. Um, yeah, it's it's always just a tasty, um, just a tasty, tasty little IPA. I, I always love it. And again, you know, I've said this several times. I'm a sucker for advertising. It's got an F14 Tomcat on it, and that sounds cool. I'm like, hey, aviation themed beer, super fun. I like it. No, that's good. And you are going to Sun and Fun here in a little bit, right? Correct. Uh, that is correct. One of America's largest uh, fly-ins is hosted here in Lakeland, Florida. It's close to Oshkosh, you know, in terms of size, but it's nowhere near it. Um, it's, but it's one of the closest. Um, but yeah, no, very exciting. It's going to be uh, a lot of planes flying around. Uh, really fun time. Highly recommended to anyone in the area. Awesome. Well, I've never been to one, but I'm going to try and make it to Sun and Fun just because I think that you said it's a blast and I believe you. It is. Uh, only one trade off. Uh, some smaller air shows will actually do multiple like craft beer tastings and stuff like that. They're pretty much only going to have big beer at this one. So um, if you like your if you like your Miller Lights, your Coors Lights, you're, you're in for a good time. But everyone else, well, just go to the local breweries near the airport within about five miles or Brew Hub, which is within like four miles or something like that. So I don't no, know. I've been there, actually. I've, I've yet to go. I need to. Oh, you definitely do. You would do best if you just got lost in there for like three days. <laughs> what, Son of Fun? No, no, no. At, at Brew Hub. At, at oh, Brew Hub. And Brew Hub. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, both. I mean, I recommend it. Don't get lost in the airfield. They'll probably pick you up pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. Don't be running around when the planes are flying. No, that's a bad, that's a bad idea. Although, fun fact, I am running a 5K while the balloons are flying. So, we, nice. it, again... <laughs> That's neither here nor there. Yeah, no, that's good. Um, well, Ryan's getting situated. I'll tell you what I got. I got man, I uh, Copper Tail again. They they started kicking ass with their uh their their Florida Weiss collection, and I got the Slam piece just because I, it it's a nice sour kind of. I love cucumber beer. I don't know why. It's like a guilty pleasure. It's a nice, but um, yeah, it's so good. It's so refreshing. It reminds me a lot of the sequinch minus the salt, and it's not exactly as tart, but it is pretty sour. And again, the uh, the cucumber finish, I just can't get over. I just really, really enjoy a beer that's got that nice cucumber kind of spike to it. Um, 
And uh, and yeah, I don't I don't know what else to say about it. It's pretty light. It's very drinkable. It's a perfect summer beer. It's I thought it would be hotter than it was this weekend when I was mowing the grass drinking this beer, but I'll still take it because I love this beer regardless. And um, I just love Copper Tail and, and the innovative things they do. So I enjoyed it. But um, Ryan, what'd you bring tonight? Yeah, uh, Ashley picked me up, and that's what we were gonna share. Uh, she went to Mad Beach the other day, and she picked up the Island Hoppin. Uh, it's a looks like six percent something like that. It's a New England style IPA. It's actually very nice. It's it's light for for New England. It doesn't feel very heavy in my opinion, but uh, you definitely get a good mouthfeel at the same time. Um, I think on a scale of like one to ten for New England's, I'd say it fits right at a seven point eight, seven point nine somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, definitely make your way out to Mad Beach if you have not been there. They've got a, a plethora of beers, but this one's actually really good. They're perfect for springtime. So, cheers. And Mad Beach Mad Beach is Madeira Beach, right? Uh, yes. It's right there. What is it? Gators on the Pass or, or John's Pass, I John's think. John's Pass, yeah. Yeah, John's Pass, right, right when you're going over the bridge. It's on the second floor. And there's actually a meadery downstairs as well and a whole other craft beer section. And you can also get some uh, hand-rolled cigars down on the bottom floor as well. So I don't think I've ever done like a meadery. Is that just, it's just like, do you, are there any meads that you really enjoy ryan because i don't think i've ever done one or like been through and like i know cigar city has a meadery now and i've just never done it meads are awesome uh we just had one tonight we were at a bottle share brew um and we had one that was you know chocolate and just straight deliciousness go well with cheesecake but uh mad beach actually does one and it's uh it's called pirate booty and man it's it's actually it's gold it's gold bottom line are, are they just, they're just really sweet it's basically beer without hops right no it's honey honey mm. meads are honey Huh. They're honey based, yeah. Honey, yeast, water, but no hops, right? Like it's not, so it's not uh, spicy at all. No, but I mean, uh, we were talking about tonight that the guy that we were talking to actually wants to make one with uh, the Cascade hops that uh, Duke and Austin grow. So they were talking to them a little bit about that. Maybe we'll have something like that to share down the road. Plus, they're also interested in uh, maybe uh, doing a podcast episode with us too. So we'll, we'll talk to them, make friends. Yeah, definitely. No, I would love to. And we're we're always in the business of making friends. That's just what we do. So yeah. I'm all I'm all about that stuff. But. Um, well, that's good. Awesome. We have so we have quite a few stories to get into. We have a few here um, on the beer side, and then we have a lot in the uh, the Geek News side. So let me just run through these beer things. It's basically a couple plugs. Uh, between now and the next time that you guys hear from us, we will or I will. Uh, I guess we'll have one more podcast, um, maybe. Uh, I guess it'll be the one right before the 11th. But on April 11th, I'm actually speaking. I was invited to speak at a panel panel called Florida Conversations through the Tampa Bay history center um i being you know the host of this podcast here uh we were invited with our friend leonard from florida hop growers carla from um, hop cloth t-shirts overflow brewing tasting room manager there and she sits on the tampa bay beer week committee which just passed as well as our good friend christian brugel from brew florida growler bar will be speaking um at the history center kind of in the um it's their last florida conversations that the history center does but it basically kicks off history by the pint so this is an exhibit that um that opened up on march 2nd runs through the 11th of august and uh, essentially it's all about florida beer history so they've got a bunch of artifacts from our friends at swope law firm and the florida brewing company um as well as stuff through the 1960s 1990s photos and, and news articles and all sorts of different bits of history that relate to florida craft beer um, and that is, again, at the History Center. We talked about it at our live gig. Um, it's TampaHistoryCenter.org, um, or you can call 813-228-0097. And again, the History by the Pint exhibit is open at the History Center from March 2nd to August 11th. So um, definitely encourage you guys to check that out. And the panel that I'm speaking on, on Thursday, April 11th, um, it's actually free. So if you are local and you want to come check it out and hear from these cool uh, craft business folks, is what I kind of name this panel, um, and myself of course, that it's going to guide us through this panel. Uh, that will be April 11th, 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. It is free of charge. No admission required. Parking downtown. We hope to see you guys at the History Center. Lost Man Ryan, you guys think that you might be able to make it out there? On Thursday, April 11th? If you can. Yeah, might be able to do that. It sounds like a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, why not? Why pass up a good opportunity to listen to good friends talk, you know? I definitely will be there. If it's free, it's for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's called free 59, free 99. What did it say? Uh, <laughs> free 
Free yeah, fifty nine sounds like it costs money. <laughs> no, it's actually cheaper than free ninety nine. So just, just oh, okay. say no, it's a forty cent discount. Will there be tax? That- <laughs> uh, no, no tax. <laughs> right. Speaking of tax, um, besides this taxing conversation that we went through, which if you are a friend of us on Facebook and in our Facebook group, Crap Brews and Geek News, you would have noticed the witty pun that we had, where we all played a mean joke on L- Mr. Lousman and had three hundred text messages go back and forth while he was at work. <laughs> Ryan was trying to decide on a video game to buy. I said, hey, Ryan, you realize that we review video games almost every week on our podcast that we've had for two and a half years. He said, don't care who this new phone. Um, I, I just was suggesting that a, a couple games to him, one of which you purchased. Ryan, I'd like to go into that purchase. Could you um, please elaborate for a few minutes here on uh, on the video game that you played for a couple hours and posted five hours of footage to YouTube on? I, I did. I posted five and a half hours of footage uh, along with, like you said, 130 text messages between all of us and then last man had to read every single one of them yes. <laughs> get caught up I had plenty of time on my hands Friday night. As you all know, Ashley's now working at Brew and doing great things there and making a lot of uh, customers happy. So I had a lot of time to myself, and I was like, Woo! what am I going to do? So, of course, who, who better to ask what play than, than the leaders of our podcast, you know? Uh, and what, what was the final one? I think it was between God of War. I think there's Gang Beasts in there a little bit. <laughs> well, which- well, see, they're all, they're all, they were all different price points. I mean, I can go back through the highlights again, but you were like, listen, man i'm looking for 10 15 bucks max so god of war god of war is technically the greatest game of 2018 i'd say in 2018 2019 so far honestly it's it's one of the greatest games ever created uh the god of war 3 but it, it's also a 60 dollar title still right now so is um no man's sky at the moment and so is red dead redemption i mean there's a bunch of good games what you were looking for was one that was in the uh, sub 20 range yep. um of which you know there was a couple there there was um uh what was uh uncharted we put in there and there was uh, i think the witcher i threw in there i think there was a couple other ones i looked at the witcher and i was like man this 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 looks like an awesome game but uh ultimately i went with uncharted 4 and i gotta say i'm hooked I've, I I just knew it was your kind of game. Boss, you jump in whenever because I know you were at work and didn't really get to contribute to this conversation. Or, or if you yeah. have alternatives, you know, jump in with those too. I got to read all 255 of them. So I mean, I saw you guys' comments. It was it was pretty good. I mean, you can't you can't really go wrong with Uncharted. That was a that was a solid choice to go with, especially at the price point. I just knew I just knew that Ryan and the way that you play video games, Ryan, you you're still kind of getting into it. There was a time when you didn't know craft beer, okay? I'm right. just saying. There was right. a time when you didn't and, and you weren't experienced in it and you, you didn't know and, and so the you you know, we like to do things a little simply. So I think that you getting uncharted kind of gave you a little bit more um of a hand up than a handout. And I think you might have uh, really enjoyed it because it was a beautiful game it and it and it plays very simply and you don't have to spend a lot of time trying to get into lore understand how to control it or anything complex you can kind of just play it and that's what i thought you were looking for well you're exactly right don i i wanted a game that i could feel completely connected to the character like i do when i watch movies right and that's what it is it's a cinematic experience it is a very it's it's got a gate uh, a great transparent uh, game feel to it where one minute you're playing and the next minute it's telling the story the storyline is really great as it unfolds plus i like history uh though i don't know how factual all this stuff is um you know, I, I liked the, the, the uh, presence of pirates and, and the storyline. So I was just really immersed and I just I started playing and I played one level at a time. And, you know, kid growing up from from being in a. I guess an orphanage or something of some sorts to then having his own life. And, and you go on this exploration. It was just really, really cool the way that it, it's unfolding. I'm, I'm on chapter 18, if you can believe that, out of 22. There's only four more to go. Nice. Like, four days, I've played that much, and I, I'm just completely immersed in it. Uh, and the kids, have, the kids have watched it with me. Uh, Ashley enjoyed it. Last night, we sat on the couch. She's like, wow, this is really a cool experience. Like It's almost like watching a movie, but you're not. Uh, yeah, what I like about it is you can literally turn off the HUD so that heads up display you can turn off everything so basically it is a movie so you don't have like inventory or like guns and i think that if you're not shot yeah. after a while like it all kind of goes away anyways and so like it's literally like you're just watching a movie and playing at the same time well, and that's another thing too i i i like 
war games and I like Star Wars, but I hate dying because I don't game a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, you know, when you die in this game or like, let's say you make a wrong move, you you go back to the point at which, you, you know, was the correct point. And then you can kind of correct your mistakes as you go. Um, it's not, you know, you don't have to. It's not, I'm unruly. All. It's not. It's not. It's uh, not unruly. Yeah. You don't have to yeah. remember a lot of buttons to, to like, oh, I got it before I die. And you take a potion like in Zelda or something just to get your health back up or, you know, any game for that matter. So I, I really enjoy that. Or you can just hide around the corner of a, of a bank whilst guns are going off from all the people that are trying to attack you from this other force and, you know, regain your health. So I, I, I like that because it gives you a chance to complete the story without feeling aggravated, like, oh my God, now I got to start over, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I tell it that you can't play a game. I mean, obviously you played, I, for, I forgot that you had, um, we had played Zelda. That's like one of the most unruly games there is like the original, like Super Nintendo one that you and I were battling for, for months. Dude, it took forever to gain yeah. what you had to gain fragments of a heart. Like, yeah. Yeah. You'd get a heart, but then it'd be like a piece of a heart. And it's like, come on, man. Yeah. I need all of them. <laughs> Yeah, well, Uncharted also has some lore to it where it's like, you know, um, they say like the reason that he doesn't die because he gets shot like a million times throughout the game. But like the game isn't terribly long. I think it's under 20 or 30 hours. It's not it's not a terribly long, terribly long game. No, but they say that he's the reason he ne Drake never dies. This came from the, the, the people who made the game. It was like because of how lucky he is. So like it's it's weird. Like they, they trying to explain the fact that you don't actually die and like have to restart or go all the way back over. It's just like how lucky lucky you know um nathan drake is but uh well i can certainly tell you he has died a lot under my <laughs> yeah. uh, even i think even ashley last night was like why do you keep dying or something one of the kids or somebody said that it was funny it's still not easy i mean you're, you're facing like an onslaughts yeah. of bad guys no, it's 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 really not easy. Um, the the thing I keep wondering because obviously I'm a I'm a big I have a big fear of heights. So you know he's he's a cliffhanger and he's he's always climbing these you know cliffs and ledges and jumping and it's like oh my god I I'm, I'm like literally conquering my own fear right now. But if this was really me doing this in real life, I would suck. I would, would not I would, be happening. I would <laughs> yeah. You know, I'd be like ah, I'm just gonna lay right here and just wither away and die. Ryan, yeah. I don't I don't recommend watching Free Solo by the way. Just okay. Yeah, it's it's not a movie about a singer. <laughs> is that a documentary or is that like a like it's a not like Bohemian Rhapsody? It's a it's a it actually is a documentary. It's a Nat Geo documentary, but the people who like help record that and like shoot the footage, like for the majority of it, they're like, ah, this is too scary. I can't even watch this guy do this. Like, just tell me when he's up there. Oh, oh, is that the guy with the he's he walk across the tightrope? No, that movie is awful. The movie I'm talking about is a man who climbs uh, Mount uh, Mount El Capitan, I believe is what it's called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And it's like a three thousand foot tall mountain that right, like gets out of nowhere. Live or does he die? I'm not gonna tell Spo you. Spoiler like, alert! Don't tell us. I want to yeah. watch it. It's on Netflix right now. Just watch it, Ryan. It, it is on Netflix. It. No, I don't want to. Actually, yeah, <laughs> like I said originally, Ryan, don't watch it because just save yourself the time. I'll tell you later, buddy. If he makes uh, it or done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he makes it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How optimistic. <laughs> Um, but no, I think overall, guys, wrapping it back up to, to the to the game, I, I made a good choice. I feel like I was looking for a bridge to connect me back to games, if that makes sense. And this might actually do it, like how some people go to a, a craft beer bar or, or even a liquor bar. and They don't really know what they want to do or you know, maybe they're just stuck on Bud Light for the longest time. Who knows? This was, I feel, my game to make me want to explore other games. I've been suggested uh, by a friend of mine that I work with to try... Uh, god of war out he was hooked on it because he saw my post the other day about playing the game he's like dude you got to try god of war i said okay i'll make that my next venture so maybe i'll try to get a cheap used copy on ebay or something well, like hey, that. hey yeah chat so remember part we, we discussed having like a like a, a network right through our craft brews and geek news facebook page yeah. like i i suggested a game share so like i can pass along a game that i got and if you never played it we can trade games and kind of borrow and play chet's already volunteered he said dude i'll put my god of war copy in an envelope right now and send it down to you guys because he's on to like three or four different games. He's playing Sud Sud not Sudoku. It's called like Sagiko and it's about like a ninja that is like uh, fighting the Countess of Death or something and he just like does these epic gory kills and he you get killed a lot but he said it's really fun and it's like a ninja game so he either way, Chet said that he'd, he'd fly down and he'd ship down his God of War 3 so I'll get him to do that right now and then I'll just give it to you and you can play it for three weeks and I'll play it for a couple weeks and we'll fly it back up to Chet. So but, we're going to um, create our own craft brew box kind of thing. Like, <laughs> well, not necessarily box, but we'll, we'll, we're 
we'll just sh- we'll share games. If anybody's got a game you want to play, you yeah. can post it up on the you could post it up on the group there. And if anybody wants to try it out, like I've got No Man's Sky. If anybody wants to try that out, mm-hmm. just to have it for a little bit, or like Witcher Three, I do have. We have Battlefront Two, which we'll talk about here in a second. A lot of games that we all have bought and played, which is why I love the physical media versus the digital downloads. Which I downloaded quite a few games recently, but um, I love them so. That makes sense. I don't know. Yeah, it was just it's cheaper that way that we could try it out because I feel like even with like Drake's uh with the with Uncharted, you know, it may be a 20 hour game, but like Ryan, to your point, if you were by yourself for a week or something and you had time, like you might knock it out. I do the same thing when when you know I'm by myself for like a week or so, like I'll I'll knock out a couple hours at a game here or there each night and then actually be done with it, you know, after a week or two. So um I'll get that copy from Chet and, and see. But word to the wise. Anybody else out there, if you guys want to contribute, you know, in this game share, just like a bottle share, you know, hey, you got something you really want to share? Throw it in the group and, and I'll trade you a Hunapu for for this and that or a homebrew for this or a mead for your, you know, sour cucumber, whatever. I'll try that out the same way that I would try um try games out that people have. I think that's a fun oh, yeah. thing to do and it's a good use of the group. I like can call it the craft library. There you go. I like that a lot. <laughs> I just come up with names. That's all. No, I, I like it. I think that we. Be- Yes, that's a thing. Yeah, that's a thing. So, so let us know. Yeah, let us know, uh, Ryan and and uh, Mike and all the guys out there that are pretty regular on the group. Like, let us know what you guys want to want to see or what you guys want to play. And if there's a taker out there, just simply say, "Hey, I'm willing to trade this for a few." It's not a keepsies thing, okay? No. For the record, you got to give the games back. But I think it'd be fun. It'd be well, fun we if you said, <laughs> "We will find you." <laughs> no, it's all good. It, again, that's why we're so. That's why the group is so great. It's because you know we we can do stuff like that. But but I know. <laughs> no, I play on PS4 and you guys play on PS4. So if anybody else is out there with some PS4 games you want to test out or you want to try out, just say, hey, I'm willing to, to throw this out to somebody for a little bit if you want to you want to try something else. So I say we start that, but that's just me. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Well, good. Um, anything else on Uncharted there, Mr. Lossman? Sorry, I know I, I over talked a lot of that. No, nah, I mean it's I, I'm I'm glad to see Rag Guy getting into it a little bit. Um it's a it's a fantastic uh very linear type of story but um i mean some of the best games can i mean some of the most immersive games i should say uh absolutely flow like that and just like you guys i mean you know when when the girlfriend's away it's very common for me to sit down with a game that i don't usually frequent like um i don't know like a modern warfare like one of the many modern warfare or you know call of duty or any of that crap and i'll just sit there and drink in the campaign i'll just sit there and watch it and i'll play it and those all play very linear like a movie and there's just so much going on on. It's 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 just something really cool to see and something really cool to experience. So I do the same thing often. So right. I, I just book. think yeah. I think I think Uncharted is a good franchise for you, Ryan. And then you have Uncharted one through three to also explore. And then they made like I said a lady version that came out after four. Um, and they, they might not be done with it, the franchise at all because they're gonna make a movie with Un- Uncharted. So there, there there might be more to the Uncharted franchise than what we currently see. But it is um it is a fantastic game. Yeah, and I'll, franchise. They're giving the other ones. Uh, a play i feel like this one told enough of his backstory to where yeah you got it the other three like it wouldn't be redundant but i'd be like oh okay now this makes sense this makes sense so i heard i heard number three is the best of the franchise but unfortunately what they had on the psn store was you could buy the bundle which had all four and that was like 60 bucks or you could just buy the individual number four for playstation 4 because number three came out for playstation 3 if i'm in if i'm correct i, I don't i might not be but so either way i could have bought all four games for an extra 40 bucks and now I yeah one for 20 so now i'm stuck and i gotta go back and i gotta buy the other ones and i'll pay more yeah. i wouldn't worry i wouldn't worry about one or two but i heard three was worth playing if you get a chance so yeah, no I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, i might check it out i want to move on to i think i'm going to tr- try out god of war next because that's what i've been told is good yeah um i still feel bad there was a there was a game that i had when i was playing playstation 3 i don't have it anymore and I got to the very last bad guy. I mean, this was bad. This was the last true game that I ever played. I died. I died. I died. I died. I never went back to. to oh, that sucks. <laughs> and I don't know how it ends, uh, to be honest with you. I'm trying to remember. She had like a big sword and like uh, it, it was a game. I'll have to think about it. But this Final game, Fantasy? No, it wasn't Final Fantasy. It was something else like Goddess of something. It wasn't uh, Bayonetta or, um, or Devil May Cry, any of that stuff? No, she wielded a big sword she. and she looked like Chun-Li out of, out of uh, 
This is, it would have been, it, I, yeah, I, I might even still have it. To be <laughs> wait, oh, wait a second. There's a female Chumley from Palm Stars somewhere. No, that's an awful picture. <laughs> um, yeah. Not to check. I'm going to finish this game. I got four more chapters to go. I'm going to finish it uh, hopefully by the end of the weekend and uh, move on to God of War within the next couple of weeks. So, All right. Well, we'll get that copy from Chet down here uh, sooner versus later. Yeah, sounds good. It's on. It's honestly funny though, because like I, I put in, I probably cranked out about fifteen percent more of my Red Dead Redemption two than I had in the last few weeks, because I had gotten to a point where I was like stuck at the mid twenties. And then um, I just like powered through it and just ignored a lot of the outside stuff and just played the story because I had fucked around with so much crap. I got the pirate hat and the pirate sword and the pirate vest and pirate pants. And I was just walking around and like stealing horses and making a bunch of money. I got like <laughs> three three thousand dollars now. And like this ridiculous outfit when I talk to everybody they're like, hey, that outfit is terrible. Like every random stranger tells me that I'm like, this is great. Like they noticed my clothes. <laughs> so, but anyways, <laughs> that's the a, point of my. Can you play Red Dead, Red Dead Redemption without playing number one? Can you just go straight to two or no well two is technically a prelude to one uh, so it's like a prequel to to red dead one so yes you can to answer your question but red dead one just doesn't have as many of uh, broad features as red dead two does but they're both good games i've heard but i i just i had played red dead two up into 25 percent, and then i literally stopped for like two months so like over the weekend i'd put in like another i'm up to like 35 or so now but um the game is so much more fun and it's it's just a lot of fun as you start to go through it but i was just reminiscing on your point ryan and like just fully getting into a game and just like playing it playing it playing it consistently because i was jumping from like no man's sky to witcher to red bit red Dead, and i just wasn't given any franchise the, the full you know experience but it's all good. So, um, yeah. Uh, good. That'll be on my list, too. I, I think I'm just going to go, I'm going to hit it as moderately hard as I possibly can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Moderately hard. That works. Um, but speak- In three years, if my hair is down, you know, here and like, I don't, <laughs> and I'm, and, and like not going outside to like get active anymore, you'll know <laughs> I've fully taken over my life. <laughs> we know that you've then uh, adapted to Minecraft or to, uh, to what, what is it? Uh, Warcraft. That's what Warcraft, I was looking for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Warcraft. Like, in there. Like, like one Dane Merck. If, yep. if I start eating some fun, Flower season diet coke on the couch all day i'm, got, I'm oh, in geez. trouble i might need right. to intervention. If, you're, if you're eating diet coke i think you're actually already that's nope. big trouble. no 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 eating su- uh, sunflower seeds and, and uh, I, drinking diet no. coke. yeah <laughs> Well, we have we have the next two or three stories here that are actually all focused around um, some video game stuff just because a lot of news broke. But literally today, I just had to hint on this. And I don't know if you guys got a chance to click the link that I sent over the YouTube video of uh, the Battlefront 2 Capital Supremacy, which literally dropped today. Um, Laos and I had hinted on this. It must have been in January, early, early yep. part of this year. And we had talked about how there's this new Battlefront mode coming. And Laos, you heard it out of some place. I mean, give me the give me the synopsis up to now and then I'll, I'll give the details today. Yeah, so um, I, I heard the um, I heard the story break out of uh, some techie sort of website or whatever um it pops up on my google feed and whatnot so i check that pretty much every day but uh there was a lot of talk about titan mode and then there was a lot of talk about their their capital mode and whatnot and it's it's always you know i well i won't give my two cents on it yet but it's always a lot of hype and i'm always cool to hear it and i'm very jazzed um but uh go ahead donnie no no you're you're right on point And, and we were just hoping that it was something similar to the i guess 2005's battlefront 2 is it even that old? I don't remember if it was that old or older. Not that old. It is. So um, I, I don't remember the exact year off the top of my head, but it's it's early 2000s. Um, <laughs> it was just called Galactic Conquest. It was just a mode in Battlefront 2, the original Battlefront 2, which is confusing now. But it yep. was the original Battlefront 2 for like PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. And, yep. um, and essentially what it was back then, and this is comparative to the Battlefront 2 now, the Star Wars Battlefront 2 that we have now, but it was basically... Basically, like you got to just fight um, and capture kind of checkpoints. And then after a while, you'd be able to um, like, well, you were either having an on planet battle or an in space battle. And so if you were in space, you could go around and you could capture checkpoints by beating up the enemy ship from the outside. Or you could fly into the hangar with a with a group of guys and go take them out from the inside. It was really cool. It was a fantastic game mode that they never introduced to the later Battlefront 
series, yeah. uh, which is confusing. But but as of today, the 26th, there are, yeah, launched on March 26th, Capital Supremacy, which is basically a very similar version of that, um, dropped. So it's a Clone Wars era authentic experience where it was a non-linear, um, as in you could... It, depending on who got the high score or who won the most checkpoints, you would have a ground battle. Your troops carriers would come in. They'd pick you up. They'd take you up. To, a cinematic would trigger. Then they'd take you up to the hangar, and then you'd have to fight on the inside of the hangar to disable the enemy ship from the inside out. And so the um, combatants got a chance to stop you at all those blocks, which sounds a lot of fun. But again... <laughs> Yeah, it was. Well, it was, but 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 EA Sports just seemed to muck it up. Um, EA Games, excuse me, seemed to muck it up yet again. Uh, really? Uh, yeah. Did you did you get a chance to check out any of that video? I I watched a little bit of it, so I didn't watch the whole thing because I didn't mm-hmm. have time. Uh, the the first time the guy went down on the ground, he fell in the hole, and I was like, "Oh, I know where this is going." He even <laughs> it was like, "Ah, I'm not very good." Um, <laughs> kind of thing. Well, but- the, the thing is, you can be good, but it's it's just it, all it is is a ground battle, and then it's a spaceship battle. They didn't they didn't innovate anything or bring anything back or grab any of the pieces of the game that really liked. Like, get away from the sniper, you know, sweet spots. Get away from the the clickbait stuff that that um tends to happen with this game, and and they just hadn't done that. And I thought they were going to with this uh but they really just didn't and i i haven't played it yet so i won't be that judgmental but i just i'm not drinking the kool-aid just yet maybe uh, they're I'm trying right. to point people more than when the new movies come out so that way when the movies come out they'll be more happy. this is this is the clone wars error this is so disconnected from any movie that is anywhere relevant in the last 20 years yeah, I just, it's not. I mean, I appreciate the yeah. optimism, it's just not that. But Lausman, go ahead. Like, make something worse than the movies and just build it up in there. <laughs> yeah, what let's, doing. Uh, let's build a solid foundation of crap and then we'll just project That'd ourselves in the future. Old. <laughs> yeah, no, that doesn't work like that. And it's just, I mean, again, you know, to, to all of what you said, Donnie, it, it really has sort of missed the mark. Um, in my opinion, everything that I've seen so far is just not very impressive. Um, and it, it really just hasn't, I mean, they had, they had the correct arc back in the early two thousands. I mean, it was, it was sort of beautiful. Uh, one thing I loved about Galactic Assault was it played like chess and it yeah. played like multi-layered chess. So you would win one round and you would win the, the ground battle, then you'd win the space battle, and then you'd move on to the next one, and then you'd lose the space battle, and then you know, you got pushed back. And it was just this this tug of war and it was always constant in it. It just played like this big game of chess where you had to make strategic moves and it was a good idea to do some things and a bad idea. If you knew you sucked at one level and your guys were gonna suck at one level because you were the robots or whatever probably don't do that like probably just arc around it and see if you could just you know um, pincer move on that planet and it was just so much more strategic and it was just so much fun and i remember um i remember speaking of chet uh just coming home from school and uh and chet would be at the helm of the xbox 360 saying pile in <laughs> and it was it was a great game and it was local you know it wasn't online yep. massive multiplayer thing it was it was local which meant that you you know you could just play against ai and it was fun but you could make it as hard or as easy as you wanted to and to your point it had strategy which i thought was great now for for the first time in battlefront 2's history they actually had have 20 AI that accompany you on on the um, capital supremacy you know mode. The mm-hmm. problem is what I saw in that video is that you're walking out there and you're just sniping those <laughs> those AI right up, poof, 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 and they're they're gone. And the the challenge becomes fighting between you and the AI or the the actual players. Which to Ryan's point, the dude that we watched, you know, in that video again, it's only been out for 12 hours or so, but um, was just dropping every five minutes, which is just depressing. And it, it was pretty stupid to. to it just didn't fix anything that was fundamentally wrong with the game, which is what I was really hoping hoping for still. And well, they just can't get there it. Was, there was a significant amount of AI in the early 2000s version as well. That was all I'm, it was, was AI. There was no multiplayer. <laughs> no, no, there was there was multiplayer. Well, it just... The, um, the Galactic Conquest was, was, was AI. Minimum. Right. Yeah. <laughs> there was like two of you. I mean, and... Um, yeah, it's it was just such a better game. And so now I would like to mention just something that I've also found on YouTube, sort of talking about all this. So there is, um, and this is no surprise, anybody who's out there who's a big fan of the Battlefront series and whatnot, the original and now this new one, 
there was a uh, a bunch of modders who modded a PC version, uh, and I believe it's you know my understanding is it's referred to as Battlefront Three Legacy, um, and that's sort of what they developed. And again, they ran into a bunch of issues because they were pretty much making this game out of physics that exist and game you know and skins that exist and characters that exist and ships that exist in the game. They just sort of built a Coruscant map and just built how it, how basically the game we got should have been. Yeah. Um, and it was, a, it is good. And you, you can just Google it. It's, it's, it is beautiful. I think, I don't know if it's Unreal Agent or Engine or not. I believe it is, but it was just, it's just so good. I mean, the way they did it, you go from, from a, a planet side battle to a space battle seamlessly. I mean, you, there's no cinematic, there's no, you know, transfer, there's no loading. You literally just flew up there if you're like, oh crap, we're losing our spaceships. Like we need to go up there and we need to defend a little bit more or, oh crap, we're losing the, you know, planet side. Let's just go f- defend that or let's go roll on that. But obviously yeah. it was modded. So, well, and that's how, it sh- that's how it should have been. And that's how I really thought it was going to be because it, it is seems like it's such a natural progression of the game and that's where it should go um but just yeah. like the movies like where they yeah. go oh we're losing up there we should go up there oh we're losing yeah. down there got to go back to planet side <laughs> so yeah really really i mean it's, it's just a shame but ea yet again missed the mark get so excited with these drops but ugh. you know you know what i'm noticing though is the uh the timeline on how excited the the, the bell curve on excitement to let down ratio is um is <laughs> drastically shortening <laughs> it's like, like it used to be like oh yeah well, we'll give it a chance we'll get a chance it's, it's, it's gonna get better right it's gonna get better oh no it's not getting better now it's just like oh that was fun it's literally like five <laughs> hours like five hours i was very excited about it i watched that one clip and i was like god this sucks yep so, i don't know i'm sure it's better um ewok hunt was a welcome improvement you, i'll give him yeah. that the one level that they released for a short while <laughs> <laughs> one level well it's, i think it's now you can play anytime you want to but yes only one yeah. level and it's crazy creepy anarchy yeah, yeah it is but then they can open that up to so many more levels and so many more areas. But eh. but then you look at an indie game like Gang Beast, which we've all gotten into now, all three of us, and they have I don't know nine levels, and it's the stupidest combat system ever. But it is freaking hilarious. It really is. So it like, is. why not? I mean, that's another game that we all played over the weekend, not maybe together, but independently and somewhat together we did. And it is just a blast. I had a blast when I played with you, Alice, man. I had a blast, yep. Ryan, when I played with you and Ashley. Oh, my God. It's so freaking funny. That game was hilarious. The game makes you feel good. I think the first like couple of minutes when we were playing, I think I head butted you off. <laughs> off the truck or something you were he's explaining like how to do something i just go Wah! And yeah i'll fire up the fucking truck it's just it's just a fun game like it's so silly and so stupid that it that's it's just that's all it needs to be and for for 20 bucks you, you can't mess it you can't mess with it so best in and that's 20 bucks not on sale everyone not on sale $20. Yeah, not on sale. Yeah. but best 20 dollars that you can spend for at least 30 or 40 minutes of just pure laugh like yep. yeah you you can't help but play that game and laugh that's yep. that's what i get out of it. it's not meant to be anything uh you know strategic or anything like that it's just meant to be fun there were we we, we faced some guys that that probably knew exactly what they're doing because they've probably been playing it forever uh but it's just a, a fucking great time really yeah and there there is ways you you can get better at it like as, as i'm playing it more and more i'm like all right i kind of see the strategies here where like you jump and you punch at the same time and you get a higher likelihood to knock somebody out i mean there's little strategies behind it but even when you get those glimpses where you don't really know what you're doing and the guy you're playing against does know what they're doing like it gets very um <laughs> it gets very very funny very quickly so i i, I do love a good gang but Oh, oh man. man, yeah, that was that was hilarious. Battle Royale. Was yeah, we'll do it as, as soon as we get. So Dane's coming back to town, right? As soon as we all get together, we'll have that, and hopefully we can get some audio out of that too, and just have a have a great time because it would be funny to get us all playing in the same time, in the same room, in the same capacity with that stupid game because it's <laughs> it's just hilarious. I'll I'll bring my PlayStation if if we meet somewhere, it's fine. It's no big deal. Oh yeah, uh, just I'm funny. In. Yeah, just a funny game. But all right, anything else? We got our last story here, which is again game related, and then um, <laughs> and then I can we can we can wrap it up for this evening. 
Grip it and rip it. Rip it. Grip it and rip it. Well, speaking of ripping it, Google Stadia ripped, um, I guess it would be late last week. So we may be a little late to the party here, but essentially, if you haven't heard about it, get out from under that rock that you live under. Google Stadia is a brand new Google cloud-based gaming platform. Um, they had a, a keynote on March 19th, so that would have been you know quite a few days ago, almost a week ago now. Uh, but it is the future of gaming, and I have to say I completely agree. It allows you to play AAA titles, so your Assassin's Creed, your God of Wars, your Elder Scrolls 6, whatever the hell may come out, on any Chrome browser from any device, including phones, laptops, TVs, and tablets. It's incredible. And it's all powered by Google's database and data centers. Um, it's got twice the computing power of the Xbox and PS4 combined. Um, it's got a controller that syncs up to the data centers itself via Wi-Fi. So current state, you're playing your PlayStation. Your PlayStation is Bluetooth connected to your PlayStation 4. That's how you control. This is saying that your controller is physically connected to the game on the game server on Google's end. The image that you see on the screen is a reflection of a, or a mirror, apparently, of, of, of what the game is actually playing as you are playing it. So there is zero latency, zero lag time in your controls, which we suffer from right now, just trying to do our podcast. So it'll be very interesting to see what a gaming um, system is like that. It does 4K, 8K, up to 60 and 120 frames per second. It can operate on Wi-Fi specifically right now or 5G when that's available. Incredible technology, incredible way that it's going to change the game. It's They're saying it could be the Netflix model of video gaming. I think it'll be a little bit different, but boys, before I get into all these you know details and crap, which I'm not even going to go into, what do, what do you guys think about the Google um, Stadia? Because I know, we, we again, we talked about it late last week during the keynote, and then um, I wanted to mention it tonight as well. But Mr. Lausman, being the avid gamer you are, how do you feel about Stadia? So I love my Xbox. I love my PlayStation. I would love it if this thing just replaced both of them. Like that would be fantastic. If I just had the one system that everyone was on and it was just so easy to get onto and I was on my, my $100 smartphone and I was on my stupid, you know, $200 TV and all my you other You could crap. play it on your Chromebook. <laughs> I would love to play it on my tiny $150 Chromebook. If I was just gaming anytime I had access to any one of these, which is often, that would be fantastic. If I could just go, well, my PlayStation 4, look at that old thing, just sitting there wanting to play with other people who also have PlayStation 4s. That would be great. Now, again, I love my PlayStation 4, but I can't wait. If this thing can replace all those, sign me up. I'm in. Let's do it. Well, and Stadia is already talking about cross-platform. So, like, you could potentially play with your Xbox buddies and your PS4 buddies and your Stadia buddies. You can play with whoever you wanted to. If if it if it went through as, as they said it might. Um, I, I think it's incredible. Ryan, did you get a chance to look much at that video or, or check out any specs on this thing? No, I, I was blown away by, by two things that I walked away with was, like, um, literally no buffering, you know, you just, you're just playing, you, you click and you go and you're, you're starting to play. But I think we talked about this when the switch came out, cause we were all blown away by, Oh, you could, you could play with the switch on your TV and then you could just pick it up and you could walk and you go and you take it places. This you can literally play on every platform that you, that you have. You play on your computer, your TV, your, uh, your cell phone device, your your laptop, you can just you can keep it going all the way down the line. You know, as long as you have an internet connection, you're you're golden. Um, I think it's going to completely open up the gaming world to uh, new heights, new levels. Uh, and I think now's a good time if you're not a gamer to get get on board with gaming. To be honest with you, <laughs> like myself. So yeah, well, I, I think it all, and all those things couple with the connection to YouTube, right? And I talked to, yeah. I mean, you guys were on the chat about this, but I talked to Dane about this. You know, we were we we're thinking about he's saying how his you know brother in law is a big a big Twitch streamer and. I'm like, like, well, the craziest thing is that they are using this to really push the YouTube gaming um, capability to a whole new level, which I think will absolutely hit home. If nothing else, even if Stadia is only adopted by 10% of the you know field out there. I mean, this market has been dominated by Xbox and PlayStation, Sony for, for the longest, you know, 20 years or so, 10, 10, 15 years already. So if they can really penetrate and, and do well with this on a low cost, whatever model they're going to do, even if they just say, hey, just like Steam, anybody who wants to can use it, but you got to pay 60 bucks a game. That's not breaking the mold. I mean, that's what Steam yeah. does 
does right now. So that's not going to give anybody heartburn. No, no AAA titles. You know, you can get um, Assassin's Creed on anything, including Steam, Xbox, PlayStation 4, whatever. There's always going to be exclusive, sure. But like Google could really capitalize on that and, and it could be the gaming mecca. And then if it's got the shareability built into the controller where you can just tap a button and it goes to YouTube or you're just on YouTube and you can tap a button and immediately start playing a game. That's pretty incredible. Um, to your point, Ryan, I mean, it's it's really going to be um, a game changer. Uh, yeah. uh. And I, I just love the instant access part. Of it. You click on yeah. it and you're playing it. I downloaded uh, Uncharted 4 the other day, and I think I was even still texting you guys. I was like, oh, now I got to wait for it to download. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I might well, that's- watch a movie whilst I wait, because that was my whole dilemma. Do I watch three movies or do I play a video game? And I'm downloading this movie or this video game. And I'm like, should I watch a movie? <laughs> you know, uh, so so to that point, it's going to make everything fast. And I think that's, you know, this the Stadia coming into play is going to force all of the other uh gaming players like yeah. Sony and Xbox to make their systems faster. We need to, we're past letting shit load. Even, even now playing on the, the, the Uncharted game, it takes like three minutes for the game to load to where my last setting was. And I get it. There's a lot of content, a lot of, a lot of stuff to load, but we're past that. I, I think we're past consoles. I think it, it should yeah. be all digital. Our movies are digital. Think about Netflix. Have you downloaded a Netflix video to watch it? No. You you want to watch the video, you push it and you watch it. <laughs> Amazon Video, you know, Hulu, it's all the same. So why are our video games still being downloaded? Why are they still this thing? For that exact reason that I just referenced with sharing games. I mean, that's <laughs> one thing why. Because you can't physically take a copy of this game and then hand it over to you, Ryan. But maybe there's a way that you could share a game through Stadia. I don't know how that will work but here's, here's, a, here's a question for you though will, will you be able to play this offline or do you always have to connect the internet to play the game well it seems like an online only kind of yeah. thing right I, that, but yeah. you would assume now you would assume he's on netflix or tv shows and then you can play them offline they, they save to your device so i wasn't right sure that well the, the no, switch is the no, same I'm way to, to have to download but. Well, the Switch is the same way because I can download any game that I've bought on the Switch eStore. I can download it to my device and then walk away from Wi-Fi and still play it. Okay. Now, will that happen with Stadia? I don't know. You know, part of the thing with Stadia is like if you if all three of us are playing and I wanted picture in picture so that I could see, like, say we were playing a Call of Duty and I wanted to see, Ryan, your view of the mission that we're playing and I wanted to see yours too, Laos, I could simply drag your avatar or whatever over so that on my screen, I'd be able to see your screen. Wow. So that I knew exactly when you were going to pull that lever on the switch that opened the door to let the zombies out. Like I could exactly time that. And Laos could be there providing support over my shoulder, knowing where I was shooting when he was shooting that. You know what I mean? So like there's pieces of it that are going to have to remain online. But if it works half as well or a quarter or the most mostly as well as they're saying it will, it's absolutely going to revolutionize the way that we think about how we game. And Wi-Fi is a large part of that. But you can get pretty much Wi-Fi almost everywhere now. <laughs> yeah. No, you, you, yeah. I... I, I I personally don't think that they're going to be able to do this without Wi-Fi because think about it this way. So my Chromebook alone, I love my little Chromebook, but it's got four gigs of RAM. So I'm not going to be able to churn out a game on an airplane playing single player because I downloaded it. Like I'm not going to be able to get the same experience yeah, yeah, from, when I'm in Wi-Fi. Well, RAM, right. Like it needs to be able to. In your what? memory. RAM is yeah, but, the you, processor. It's not the same as your memory on your, on your computer. Yeah, I'm familiar how a uh, computer works, Will Robinson. <laughs> but <laughs> no, but I mean, what I'm saying is, my tiny little Chromebook, my Chrome, my Chromebook can't do. It couldn't. I don't think it could successually do like Roller Coaster Tycoon. You're saying you're saying if if an, if the game is open on your computer because it's downloaded from the hard drive and running with the RAM rather than just using the uh, the inter- GPU from the server of, yeah. of the internet. Yeah. Okay. I, I, okay. Now, yeah. yeah, and I think that's what's going to make or break this thing. And, and our own, our very own Daniel Guzman actually um, had been a beta tester for Google Stadia when it was called Project Stream from Google. Uh-huh. And he said that it was very laggy. It was very choppy. It didn't function well. But again, when you're a beta tester, that's what you anticipate. So if, if it worked then at all, you would assume upon launch, which is going to be fall of 2019, it will actually function as they designed it to. Now, will it be full functionality? Who knows? Doubtful. But it could be something that really does start to turn the tide of a video game as, as we know it. So I'm all about it. What do, you, what, do you, what do you guys choose? Do you choose 
uh, Stadia or uh, the, the streaming app that Disney's going to put out. <laughs> uh, that's not the same bucket. That's yeah. That, I, I mean, I'm oh. getting the Disney streaming app regardless just because of Star Wars. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, what are you going to put? You're going to have your gaming device and streaming uh, Disney classics <laughs> at the same time. Like, could. Potentially, yeah, I guess he could if he wanted to, but um, I'm definitely getting the Disney Plus, and we'll talk about that as more news breaks during celebration. I anticipate a lot more news to break, um, for overall Disney streaming and all things Disney. Um, I did happen to receive my media pass today for celebration, so more news on that right. as we are less than two weeks away from that as well. Uh, but um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm just very excited about Stadia, I'm very excited about the, the state of games as we move forward. Um, I'm excited that. Ryan is finally getting back into video games again. That's great. <laughs> Your first hits, you know, always the the cheapest. Once you get on from there, it starts to, to snowball. Oh, and um, I like and I, yeah, just it's a great time to be alive, boys, and it's a great time to be a video gamer. So, anything else before we wrap this stuff up? Nope. Um. Well, I well, I don't know if you want to talk about this now, but I think our next podcast lands a week or two before Avengers comes out. No. Uh, the next one will be on the eighth. So. When, when does the Avengers come out? 26th. So we'll have two more before then. Well, we have two more? Okay. Yeah. So, all right. I was just prepping for that mentally. Never mind. Cut that out. Well, we should go see it. We should go see Avengers. I'm down to go see it if you want to. The 26th is... Um... Uh, what is it? Well, I'm just thinking we should have a we should have a cast or a podcast leading up to. I'm uh, down. Things going to happen and, and and all of that. I what don't even know where to go with it. <laughs> so who's going to be the guy recording whilst everybody goes to the bathroom? <laughs> uh, <laughs> we should all go dressed up though. There's no way I can drink a beer or two and then sit through three hours without having to pee and miss something important. I swear to God. <laughs> well, there's no way you can drink for three hours and not miss when you pee, but. Um, I digress. <laughs> if we go dressed up, who are you going to be, Loss? Well, no, no, no. Before I even answer that, uh, here's what I was going to say. I was going to say we should we should let it up to the Facebook group and see what what character we should each go as. Well, how, wait. What does that mean? I don't want to buy a costume. I don't want to buy a costume. <laughs> yeah. See, what, there we go. What they say, right. you guys, rude boy. You guys, Atlanta. I'm going to dye myself purple, find some charms, and and just wear like. How? leather vest or what they say hey go as thor well at least i got the haircut for it but i don't have a hammer <laughs> actually <laughs> technically technically they would say at least you got the haircut thor it but uh i digress <laughs> yet again uh what i was in the middle of saying is we should have some sort of competition where the loser has to dress up like a character or perhaps maybe everyone votes you can cut this out but i'm just saying this would be a cool thing to motivate the Facebook group is say, hey, your vote directly could make one of us dress like, I don't know, the Hulk for Avengers. No, I say and that the loser, be- the loser should have to dress like Hawkeye because he's the worst. <laughs> well, I- all right. Well, that's fun. We can all fit into the same Hawkeye co- or costume if we just create costume. How about we're the, the losers? Pants. Yeah, how about how about we're the losers and we all have to go as Hawkeye? All of us. Can I just bring a bag? That's fine, too. Bring a bag of dust and then just if somebody says, what's that pouch for? Just be like, well, it's my costume. And be like, well, what, do you, what are you? And just be like, I'm Spider-Man as he blows away. Huh? No, I think we should all get black leather vests and bring bows into the movie theater and nope. go as Hawkeye. And we just be like, we're all going as Hawkeye to see the movie together. Not <laughs> I don't bad know. idea. I don't know. People. <laughs> like, it's not. That's not my best, but um, something like that. Anyways, yes. Let's talk about it in the group and see what you guys want to do. My dust joke was way better. I dust think joke we should have a competition. Dust joke would have been fine if you would have went to the first Avengers, the, the first uh, Affinity War with that, because now they're not going to be dust. Obviously, they're all coming back, or some of them are coming back. I don't know who, but we'll see. I think they all come back. Gamora can't come back. Well, Loki's dead. Yep. Loki's okay. dead. Gamora okay, but has to... I think... Evans, bro. Yeah, I know. She has to come back because she's part of the Guardians. I get that. I'm just saying... I, we'll have to see how they explain oh, it. But... Do you think Gamora does come back? Or did she ever die? Or will we can all dress up as Gamora. I got it, Ryan. That's fine. We'll nope. do that. I'm just trying to ruin my idea. <laughs> yes, I am. Um, nah. But on that note, uh, we can talk about this on a, on a different night. We are now at our time, boys. So we've got to wrap things up. Any final thoughts on all this great dialogue this evening? I think it's too late to play, but I might get on one play. <laughs> you might get online? I'm going to bed. I'm on call. Oh. <laughs> I'm probably going to pass out as well because I'm very tired. <laughs> I'm going to live the gamer's life then. 
do it, it buddy. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, you can find all of us at our various social medias. Um, we do appreciate y'all listening to us. Thank you for the uh, you know, the involvement on the Facebook group again. Facebook group, Crack Brews Geek News, not hard to find. Um, please plan to come out to the History Center and watch the Florida connections on craft beer and how it's influenced this history of our great area here, Tampa Bay. Um, we'd love to see you guys there. You can find me uh, on Twitter and YouTube and Instagram. I believe Instagram is Brewmasters Club. Twitter and YouTube would be Craft Brews and Geek News. We have all of our podcast episodes go up there a little bit later than than we have them on the podcast channel, uh, but they are up there for your viewing and enjoyment if you prefer to get them that way. Uh, Mr. Lossman, where can the good kids find you? Uh, I could be found on Twitter at Mr. Lossman. Having fun. And Broodboy813, where can the good kids find you? Yeah, on Instagram. Uh, I'm not really on Twitter that much, but Instagram or Twitter at Broodboy813. And you can also find me on the Craft Brews Geek News Facebook page. Hit us up and uh, join our group. we got a lot of people on there, and we're, we're sharing content like crazy, it feels like right now. It's awesome. Yeah, we are. We're really blowing it out. And there is over 100 people in the group now, so I'm happy to say that. And everybody's very cool and very fun to hang out with. So I do encourage you guys to uh, to hit us up on there. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. All right, and as we say at the end of every episode, Mr. Broodboy 813. Stay to tune for more news from Craft Brews and Geek News. All right, we'll try that. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> he rhymed. <laughs> You've been listening to the official podcast of the Brewmasters Club, Craft Brews and Geek News. Grab a beer with the guys and be sure to subscribe to catch additional content. Add this podcast to your favorite RSS feed or iTunes. Chat with the guys on Twitter at Brewmasters Club and Facebook and online at www.brewmasters.club. Cheers.